Lady Astor presents the Screen Guild Players. The Lady Astor Screen Guild play tonight, Suspicion. The starring players... This is Cary Grant. This is Loretta Young. And this is Nigel Bruce. Tonight, Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild Players in Suspicion. It stars Loretta Young as Lena Isgarth, Nigel Bruce as Beaky Thwaite, and Cary Grant as Lena's husband, John Isgarth. The Lady Esther Screen Guild Players in Suspicion. I am Lena Aesgarth. I have been married to John Aesgarth for the happiest months of my life. But those months are past. I have been living in terror for weeks. My days endless hells of suspicion. And my nights interminable eons of torment. I am certain my husband has decided to murder me. I can't prove it, of course. But I'm sure he's going to kill me. Just as I know he killed his best friend, Beaky Thwaite. But I can't prove that either. I guess I've always been afraid of Johnny. Some way, perhaps intuitively, I've known he was going to destroy me, as he destroyed his own good name. But I loved him. And even now, waiting for him to kill me, I love him. I... I think that when Johnny does kill me, I'll die happy. It will be a relief. I can't stand this waiting. Johnny had a reputation for wildness before our runaway marriage, one of those generally bad reputations to which no one can supply any specific details. And I wouldn't believe generalities. Oh, I was supremely happy during our honeymoon, troubled only by the tremendous expense of our trip. But whenever I mentioned money, Johnny refused to answer. When we reached our new home, a mansion far beyond my most extravagant dreams, I learned why Johnny had avoided the subject of finances. Johnny received a telegram. Is it bad news, Johnny? Oh, no, dear. It's from an old friend of mine. Stupid fellow. He wants a thousand pounds. You uh, couldn't spare a thousand, could you? A thousand? Well, what does he want it for? Oh, hanged if I know. Probably because I borrowed it from him. (laughs) You borrowed it? Well, why? Well, because I was going on a honeymoon with the loveliest girl in the world, and I wanted to make her happy. But didn't you have any money of your own? No, not a shilling. <laughs> Johnny, I don't understand. Are you broke? <laughs> Darling, I've been broke all my life. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, every time I brought the subject up, you... Well, whatever made you take this extravagant house? Well, no, I didn't think you'd want to live in a shack. A girl like you is going to come into plenty of money any day. Wait a minute. I, I can't quite get this into my head. Were you thinking of my inheritance when... Johnny, I don't know what to say. Oh, now, darling, really. Isn't it silly to spend the best years of our life waiting? Why not be comfortable now? (laughs) Johnny, I'm just beginning to understand you. You're a baby. Oh, I know you didn't marry me for my money. You could have done so much better elsewhere. But, well, my income will never pay for this. Hmm. Well, uh, what about your father? Well, he wouldn't actually want to live on your wife's allowance, would you? Well, answer me, Johnny. That was my introduction to Johnny's complete irresponsibility. He believed only in luck and lived his life on borrowed money in the hope that one of those horses on which he bet that borrowed money would win at long odds. I finally prevailed on him to take a job that had been offered managing the estates of his cousin, Captain Melbeck, and he promised to stop betting. Oh, I was very happy for a few days. 
And then a couple of weeks after Johnny had started on his job, a man came to our house. Oh, hello. I'm Beaky Thwaite. You must be old Johnny's wife. Yes, I am. <laughs> Didn't he ever tell you about me? Beaky? Oh, yes, you're Beaky. <laughs> yes, that's, that's oh. what they used to call me at school. I, oh. I happened to be driving by. I thought I'd just pop in for a cup of tea. Oh, I'm delighted. I've heard so much about you, Mr. Thwaite. Oh, yeah, Johnny told me about you, too. Oh? I ran into him last week at the Newbury races. The races? Oh, put my foot in it again, have I? As usual, huh? I mean, uh, uh, didn't he tell you? Well, Johnny has a job. He he couldn't have been at the races. Besides, he's he's given up betting. Oh, yes, has mm-hmm. he? Well, don't you believe it. Not Johnny. Old Johnny dropped a, a packet of money at Newbury, I can tell you. <laughs> Where did he get the money to bet? I don't know, old girl. But if I were missing anything, I'd ask old Johnny. Yes, I shall. As soon as he comes home. Well, you won't have to wait long. Here he comes now. And load it down like old Nick himself. Huh. Hello, Bean. Well, well, Biggie. Ah, uh, don't move either one of you. Just stay like that. I must watch the expressions on your faces. Ethel. Yes, sir? What have we to drink in the house? Gin, brandy, champagne, and pims number one, sir. Well, bring them all, Ethel. Get a move on. Oh, very good, sir. My friends, I have the pleasure of announcing that the Goodwood Cup was run today, and I happen to have backed the winner. A ten-to-one shot, and I had 200 pounds on him. 200 pounds? Why, that's uh, 2,000 quid, old bean. Amazing, Beaky. How do you do it? These packages are the loot. Lena, what's happened to your tongue? Oh, I suppose you disapprove of my betting, huh? Oh, not with those jewels in her lap, she doesn't. Oh, come (laughs) on, darling. Smile. I know I've been naughty, but look, it's all for you. I say, look, look, look. Ethel's brought in the drinks. What about celebrating? Uh, trust Beaky to say the right thing at the right time. Oh, come on, Obin. I could do with a pull at the beaker. Well, here's one for you, Lena. Thank you, Beaky. And uh, this is yours, Johnny. Thank you. And uh, now for a toast. Hey, hey, Beaky. What are you <coughs> drinking, brandy? Oh, this is once, Obin. Oh, you know that's not good for you. Oh, all right. Well, all right. Maybe just this once, huh? Oh, thanks, old boy. Lena, I drink to the last bet that will ever be made by Johnny Aisgarth. The last bet, old bean. Well, here we go. <coughs> oh, Johnny Beaky's choking. Get some water quickly. No, no, it won't help. I've seen this happen before. Brandy affects his heart. Well, then why did you let him drink it? Here, help me open his collar. Why bother? It'll either kill him or it'll go away by itself. <coughs> I, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I'm awfully sorry, old bean. One of these days, it will kill him. That was the first time my intuition warned me of the cold-blooded savagery inherent in Johnny. It frightened me to watch his eyes as he stared at Beaky, painfully struggling in a heart attack that he, Johnny, could have prevented. After that day, our life together took a definite turn for the worse... And one shock followed upon another. I'd been up to the bookshop to get some murder mysteries, which were Johnny's only reading matter, when an old acquaintance stopped me. Oh, hello, Mrs. Aysgarth. How are you, Mrs. Newsham? Has Johnny settled down to the simple rural life? <laughs> oh, yes, it seems to agree with him. Abandoned all his vices, has he? Vices? What vices, Mrs. Newsham? Oh, uh, such as betting at the races. Oh, instance? he has no time for that. He's much too busy with his job. Is he? Of course. He was at the Merchester races yesterday. <laughs> he was? How interesting. Good afternoon. I was heartsick at learning Johnny had broken his promise again, and I went directly to Captain Melbick's office where Johnny worked to ask Johnny for the truth. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Aysgarth. Good afternoon. Is Mr. Aysgarth in? Mr. Aysgarth? Yes. Why, no. Well, when do you expect him? Well, I... I really couldn't say. Uh, perhaps you'd like to talk to Captain Melbick. Oh, yes, I would. Very much, please. Well, then, please follow me. Thank you. Mrs. Aysgarth to see you, Captain Melbick. Why, Mrs. Aysgarth. Oh, good what afternoon. What a pleasure to see you. Good afternoon. Uh, do sit down. Uh, thank you. Captain Melbick, I-, I don't want to pose upon you, but you're Johnny's cousin as well as his employer, and, well, I wanted to talk to you about him. I'm terribly worried. Well, yes, I can understand that. But I told him I wouldn't prosecute, of course, if... I don't understand. Oh, I told him I wouldn't prosecute. What on earth are you talking about? You mean you don't... What reason did he give you when I discharged him? Discharged him? Why, yes, six weeks ago. 
We had an unexpected audit and the account showed a deficit of £2,000 when I looked into Johnny's records. I, I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Aysgarth. He should have told you. You... you say you're not going to prosecute? Uh, not for the time being. I see. I'll give him every opportunity of replacing the money. But after all, I, I, I can't wait indefinitely. Does Johnny know that? Yes, I told him that unless he made good, he'd have to go to jail. And what did he say? Oh, something about collecting on some insurance or something. He swore he'd pay. After learning that Johnny was an embezzler, a common thief, as well as a gambler and a liar, I hurried home to prepare to leave for my mother's. But while I was writing my goodbye note to Johnny, he came into our bedroom with a telegram telling me my father's sudden death. He was very tender and sympathetic. And with his arms around me, I forgot his faults. After Father's funeral, during our drive home, I gave Johnny every opportunity to tell me of his trouble with Captain Melbick, but he evaded the issue. Instead, he talked of a grandiose scheme he had for developing a stretch of rocky beach into a resort. He thought the development would cost 30,000 pounds. And when we returned to the house, he began working on the scheme with Beaky. Who's going to put up the money for this development, Johnny? Why, I am, old girl, of course. Oh, I see. Well, the idea's mine, but the, the money's Beaky's. The company's going to be my name, of course. But, Johnny... Look, it, it... darling, let me show you how simple it is. Does Beaky understand it? Oh, perfectly, I think. You see, we, um, we buy up this land and we sell part of it. That gives us 100% profit in no time. And on the other part, we, uh, we, we build uh, something or other. Oh, Beaky, isn't it about time you grew up? Uh, I... Look here. What right have you got to interfere with my affairs? Well, well I wasn't really. I... Well, I was only... I... You, uh, you better go and change for dinner, Beaky. Oh, what? Right you are, Ben. Uh, let me know if anything exciting happens. Now, what were you saying? I... I was only trying to tell Beaky that that he shouldn't leave everything to you. Suppose that he... Beaky had taken you seriously. You would have ruined the whole scheme. Do you realize that? Well, yes, but if it wasn't good, then but I... If I say it's good, it's good. I'm going through with this deal, and I won't stand for any interference from you or anyone else. Is that clear? Yes, it's clear. Johnny, you're hurting my arm. then that Beaky was doomed. With the company in, in Johnny's name, all he had to do was get Beaky out of the way and the 30,000 pounds would be his. And looking into Johnny's eyes, I could see Beaky's death notice. The second act of the Lady Esther Screen Guild play will follow in just a moment. Now, a word from Lady Esther. Have you noticed any change in your skin lately? Is it getting a little dry, a little flaky? Have you discovered a blemish here and there, an enlarged pore opening? Well, better watch out. Those are nature's little warnings that all is not well, that something is wrong with your method of skin care. All you really need for the complete daily care of your skin is just one cream, Lady Esther Face Cream. This one cream by itself does all the four most important things your skin needs for beauty. And I don't just say it. I prove it. I prove it in 30 seconds with a famous patch test. To make this interesting test, just smooth Lady Esther Face Cream on one patch of skin, like one cheek. Wipe it off. Then compare that cheek with the other. See the radiant difference. Feel the difference with your fingertips. This 30-second patch test will show you how thoroughly Lady Esther Face Cream cleans your skin, how it softens your skin, how it helps nature refine the pores, and how it leaves a smooth, perfect base for powder. Remember, all I ask is that you let the patch test prove this. Let the patch test prove that Lady Esther Face Cream does more for your skin 
than any face cream you have ever used. And now, the second act of Suspicion, starring Nigel Bruce, Cary Grant, and Loretta Young. The morning after I attempted to interfere with Johnny's scheme to involve Beaky in real estate development... Beaky and Johnny wanted to go to Paris. And certain that Johnny would take this opportunity to kill Beaky for his money, I opposed them. And reluctantly, Johnny appeared to give in. Tell you what I might do, Beaky. I might drive up as far as London with you. Well, that's a good idea, Robin. How Bean? about that, Lena? Well, it seems to me, Johnny, I that know, the... I know. It seems to you that I should be looking for a job. Well, I'll have much more chance of getting a job in London than I would anywhere around here. Yes, of course he would. I say, do let him come, Lena. Well, I don't see very well how I can stop him. Hooray! Hooray! Well done, Obi. I say, dinner at Savoy, Obi. Dinner at the Savoy, Obi. Little, little nightclub, Obi. Yeah, little nightclub, Obi. <laughs> hey, come on, Biggie, do your imitations. Make a noise like a duck. Go on. Duck? Oh, oh, <laughs> Johnny. Yeah, uh, uh, quiet, Biggie. Johnny, <laughs> well, well, promise dear. me you'll only go to London, that you won't go to Paris. I promise, I promise. And if things work out as I think they will, we'll be able to afford a little better living when I get back. If things work out as I think they will If things work out as I think they will All that day and night those words kept pounding in my brain If things work out as I think they will Those words meant only one thing to me Beaky was going to die Two days later This is Ayscarth Yes I'm Inspector Hodgson from the county police Oh Well won't you sit down Thank you I understand your husband's not in, madam. Well, no. No, he's been in London for two days now. Well, I believe you know Mr. Thwaite. Oh, yes. He's a close friend of my husband. Was a close friend, madam. Mr. Uh, Thwaite died under mysterious circumstances in Paris. We're making inquiries on behalf of the Paris police. Found some papers on Mr. Thwaite's person which indicated he'd just formed a corporation with your husband. I see. What do the French police think caused Beaky... I mean, Mr. Thwaite's death? Telegram we received from Paris says Thwaite visited the place of his death in the company of another Englishman. Both men had evidently been drinking. On arrival, Thwaite ordered a bottle of brandy. Brandy? Yes, madam. Apparently, as a result of a bet between the two men, Thwaite filled a large beaker to the brim and drank all the brandy. The other man was not present when the actual death occurred, having left the place as soon as Thwaite drank the brandy. Oh, I could easily imagine what had happened... I'd seen Beaky drink brandy before, as had Johnny. Johnny, Beaky's choking. Get some water, quickly. I've seen this happen before. Brandy affects Beaky's heart. It'll either kill him or it'll go away by itself. One of these days it will. I remember that. And it was all the proof I needed that Johnny has murdered his best friend, Beaky, by tempting him to drink brandy. Oh, it was very clever. But there was only one slip-up. Johnny didn't get Beaky's money. The corporation papers weren't signed right or something. But Johnny's desperate now, I know. Captain Melbeck has been phoning him every day, insisting that Johnny replace the money he embezzled. And that's why I'm so certain that Johnny's going to kill me tonight. I read a letter that came to Johnny from my insurance company. He was trying to raise a loan on my insurance. But the company wouldn't grant it. According to the terms of the policy, the letter read... Payment can only be made in the event of your wife's death. At a dinner party tonight given by Isabel Cornwall, our local celebrity and a murder mystery writer, Johnny was very critical of the murders Isabel's fictional characters committed. I'm sure that I detected a smug self-satisfaction in his voice when he told Isabel... Oh, I'm afraid you're slipping as a murder mystery writer, Isabel. That last one was, well... It... Well, what? Well, for one thing, it's too complicated. If you're going to kill somebody, do it simply. How would you do it simply? Oh, I don't know, dear. Just, uh... Well, just use the most obvious method. The most important thing is that no one suspects me. For instance? Well, for instance, uh... Poison. Oh. Yes, just use the first one that comes to your mind. 
Oh, Johnny, that would never do. The police exhumed a body in Gloucester four years after the victim's death, and there was still enough poison even in the fingernails and hair. But did they get the murderer? No, I don't believe they did. Well, there you are. This very minute, there are hundreds of people who have committed murder walking about freely. Thousands. Do you suppose those murderers are happy, John? Oh, I don't know. Why shouldn't they be? Fear of discovery, Johnny. Yes, but it seems to me that by now somebody would have discovered a poison that can't be traced. You must have heard of one. Mm, uh, I'm planning a very interesting corpse for my next book, Johnny. No, no. Don't change the subject, please, Isabel. I saw that startled look in your eye when I mentioned the untraceable poison. What is it? I wouldn't tell in a million years. Well, I won't give you any rest until you do, so you may as well tell me now. Can't be very long now until Johnny kills me. He learned the name of the untraceable poison from Isabel. And after bringing me home... He went for a walk in the village. And when he returned, he came up to my room, but I was too nervous to talk with him. And now, now he's downstairs getting me a glass of warm milk. And I'm certain that the milk will contain that poison. That's Johnny now. I, I wonder if it's going to be very painful. I hope not. I don't want Johnny to know that I suspect anything. I can't stand this waiting. I can't stand this waiting. No! Lena, Lena, darling, what in the world is wrong? Johnny! How do you feel now, darling? What happened? Well, when I brought you the warm milk last night, you screamed and fainted. Oh. Have I, have I been asleep all day? Yes, the, uh, the doctor gave you a pill this morning. Oh. Your nerves seem to be all upset. I was quite worried about you. Where are you? Uh, you're still annoyed with me, aren't you? Oh, no, no, Johnny. I, I just don't feel very well, that's all. I think I'll go to my mother's for a few days. All right. I'll run down and get the car ready. No, no, don't, Johnny. I'll, I'll drive myself. Say, wait a minute. What's come over you these past few days? You don't act as though I were your husband. Every time I touch you, you pull away. No, no, Johnny, you're imagining things. Well, I'm not going to stand for any more of it. Come here. No, no, leave me alone, Johnny. Please, leave me alone. No, stop, it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it, you little fool, stop it. Johnny. I've had enough. How much do you think a man can bear? Listen to me. You turn me out of your room, you go running away to your mother's. And now you shrink away from me as though you hated me. You're my wife, Lena. But, but I thought I thought you wanted to. Well, you won't have to put up with me anymore. Johnny, where are you going? First, I'm taking you to your mother's. And then what? Don't worry, I won't bother you again. What do you mean, Johnny? Why do you think I wanted to learn the name of that untraceable poison? Johnny. Is that why you were asking Isabel about that poison? You, you wanted to kill yourself? Yes. Oh, oh my darling. But then I saw that was a cheap way out, so oh. I'm, uh, I'm going to see it through. Prison term and everything. Prison? Oh, my dear, I can't pay back the money I took from Melbeck. I, I made the last attempt to raise the money when I went away with Beaky. To Paris? Oh, I didn't go to Paris, darling. I, I went to Liverpool. I tried to borrow on your insurance there. You... But it didn't work. You didn't go to Paris? Oh, of course not, Lena. Do you think I'd have let some idiot give poor Beaky that brandy if oh, I had? Oh, Johnny, my darling. What, dear? Oh, Johnny, I'd be so ashamed to have you know what I've been thinking. My imagination has been running away with me. No, no, it's probably my fault, darling. I, I've done enough wild things to make you suspect me of anything, given the right circumstances. Oh, no, this is much my fault as it is yours. If I'd been really close to you, if you could have confided in me. Oh, but it'll be different now, Johnny. We'll make it different. Oh, I think we'll have to wait until after, uh, well, until after I get out of prison, Lena. Oh, I'll wait, Johnny. Oh, it may be a long time, my darling. A long, long time. I'll be waiting, I'll be waiting. Thank you. 
Thank you, Cary Grant, Nigel Bruce, and Loretta Young for an absorbing half hour. Believe me, we will all remember your performances for a long, long time. Well, Mr. Bradley, we won't forget being here tonight either. An appearance with Lady Esther Screen Guild players, well, it's one of the highlights of the year for us. Because we all know the magnificent work being done by the Motion Picture Relief Fund and its country house. And we know that work is made largely possible by these programs, and we consider it a privilege to share in it. Well, there's another wonderful charity, Loretta, one in which everyone can share. Do you know about all those little kids who can't move their legs? Kids who've never had a chance to swim or skip rope or play baseball? Kids who don't know how good it is to feel green grass between their bare toes? Well, those kids would be very grateful to you if you won't forget the March of Dimes. Be sure to give to the March of Dimes. Help those little kids walk again. Thank you, Mr. Grant. And now, in just a moment, Nigel Bruce will tell you about next week's show. But first, here's a word from one of America's best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. How would you like to look the way you've always dreamed of looking, but never quite dared? You know, exciting, romantic, perhaps a little exotic. Now, I don't say that Lady Esther Bridal Pink Face Powder will perform miracles. But I do say this new shade will give life and color to your face, depth to your eyes, a real lift to your spirits. For Bridal Pink instantly makes you look more interesting and romantic. Women of every age have written to tell me how much more attractive they feel since they began using Lady Esther Bridal Pink Face Powder. Bridal Pink has been deliberately blended to flatter even a dull or sallow skin. You'll see for yourself how it gives instant new life and vitality to your entire appearance. How it gives glamour to your skin, sparkle to your eyes, even a new richness to your lips. And it really doesn't matter what your own colouring happens to be. You can use Lady Esther Bridal Pink whether your hair is blonde or brunette, auburn or brown. The texture of Lady Esther face powder is so flattering, too. The instant you apply it, tiny lines and blemishes seem to vanish, completely covered. Your skin looks so much smoother, so much finer. If you want to present a dazzling new appearance to your family and friends, try this. First, smooth on Lady Esther for purpose face cream. Wipe it off. And then apply Lady Esther Bridal Pink Face Powder. Bridal Pink. The shade that instantly wakens your face to new life, new beauty. And here is Nigel Bruce. Thank you, Albina. Now, next week's show is really a corker. I know you're all going to enjoy it very much. I know I will. Oh, thank you. Cheerio. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Bruce. Just a moment. Yes, Albina? Uh, you've forgotten one thing, I believe. Uh, next week's show? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, Obin. Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will bring you Brother Rat with Wayne Morris and Ronald Regan. Next week, then, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will present Brother Rat. It will star Wayne Morris and Ronald Regan. Be sure to listen. Cary Grant will soon be seen in the RKO Alfred Hitchcock production... Notorious. Loretta Young is now making the Hal Wallace production, The Perfect Marriage. Nigel Bruce can soon be seen in the universal picture, Terror by Night. You save enough on the largest size jar of Lady Esther face cream to buy a box of Lady Esther face powder. So remember, ask for the largest size. Music on tonight's program was arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. This is Truman Bradley speaking for Lady Esther. Thank you, and good night all. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.